Hey everyone, Andy here, and today I'm checking out the new Compact Zoom 2 lenses from Zeiss. Uh, here I have the 70-200mm uh, to 200 millimeter zoom, and next door here I have the 28-80mm to 80 zoom. Uh, these are two in the set. The third, uh, which has been announced, is the 15-35, to 35, which will be available sometime in the future, making that a nice, full, complete range of zooms from Zeiss. Uh, the, the Compact Zooms are similar to the Compact Primes in that they have some unique characteristics in that they can cover full frame sensors, right? The Compact Primes can cover full frame sensors, so can the Compact Zooms. This means that the, these, these lenses will work not only on Super 35 sensors, but also on full frame sensors like the 5D Mark III or the 1DC, and of course anything in between, namely like the Red Dragon at 6K, will be covered by these lenses. Also unique to this sort of set of lenses uh, is that you have uh, a, an ability to change the lens mount on the back of these lenses from PL to Canon, Nikon, etc. So really nice option uh, for a zoom lens, very unique, but also very future proof. So great options. And of course these lenses are mechanically built like any other high quality Zeiss lens, very clean uh, parts, 18 blade aperture, uh, mechanically excellent. But we really wanted to compare the image quality of these lenses to some of its contemporaries in the Zeiss sort of world. So we put these lenses against uh, some ultras and master primes to see what happened, how do, how do they look. Uh, so we took the 70 200, 20 to 80, and, and compared it to a 32, 65, 100, and 135 master and ultra prime. This is a little test with the model. Very just aesthetic and quality, we're not looking at MTF curves, things like that, just to see how it performed overall. So I have some tests to show you. First we'll start with color and contrast. I want to see how these lenses just with color and contrast compared to the ultras and master primes. So let's go into the first shot here. First we looked at the ultra prime, which we found to be fairly neutral overall. Not much color shift going on in the image versus sort of reality. And then we go to the master prime. And you see the difference right away. And then the master prime is a little bit more warm overall. So there's a, color a little bit of color shift towards the warmer side there, which is certainly a nice thing. Now let's go to the, the compact zoom here. This is the 28 to 80. And we'll see also, wow, look, there, there's, a, there's a warmer tone to it. Uh, let's compare that again to the ultra prime. And again, you see uh, there is a color shift difference. And it's a little bit more neutral, a little bit more warm with the compact. So right away we found that the compact uh, was a warm tone. It actually matches a little bit better with the Master Prime than it does the Ultra in this case, but again, very, fairly similar. Uh, also, contrast is a big distinct, distinctive thing with the Zeiss lens. Zeiss is known for a very contrasty look. Uh, so we noticed right away that they all held blacks very well, very contrasty as expected. The one thing we did notice is that the compact zoom, comparatively, is a little bit more dark. They, all these lenses are at the same exposure, but the midtones are just a little bit more contrasty in the compact zooms. Here's that ultra, master, and compact again. And you can see uh, that the image is a little bit more dark in the midtones on that compact. So just a little different, but again, very similar, very contrasty as expected in the Zeiss line. The next thing we wanted to test was the uh, sharpness of the lenses. Uh, we expect Zeiss lenses to be sharp overall, as they always are. Uh, but we yet again wanted to test it with our, our chart here, which is a 4K resolving resolution analysis chart that we've designed uh, here at ABLE and we sell. Uh, and so we just did a quick resolution chart test here, which you can see behind our model. And from our, uh, our viewing in 4K, it's hard to tell here on the internet, but viewing in 4K we found the master prime to be very, very sharp, as expected, a very, very sharp look. Here's the ultra prime now, still very sharp, and then the compact zoom again equally as sharp. Uh, we found that the ultras and compacts held up very similar to each other. Masters had that just extra little kick as expected, but again, very, very similar in that way. Next thing we wanted to test for was breathing or subject shift in the lenses. That's where if you change your focus on the lens, the image appears to change shape a little bit or, or to zoom in slightly. Uh, so we can put the lenses up next to each other and compare it across. Here's the 28 to 80, and again, pulling focus, you see there's not much shift actually in the image shape. Master Prime has very little at all, or virtually none, which is to be expected. And finally, the Ultra Prime here has a good amount of shift. So again, well within spec, but the Ultra Prime in this case has more shift, so the Master and the Compact actually are fairly comparable. Now let's go to the longer lens, the 70 to 200 here, and compare again. First the, the Master Prime, again, very, virtually zero shift. Now the Ultra Prime, which again has a good amount of uh, breathing in it, so you see the shift there overall. And then finally, 
the compact zoom, which has a comparable amount of shift or breathing in the image. So in this case, we found the ultra and compact to be fairly similar uh, in, in its nature. So again, still a good, still well within the, spe the spec of the Zeiss lenses. Uh, finally, we wanted to check bokeh or bokeh, which is sort of the look of the out of focus regions of the uh, image. Uh, these compact zoom tubes have 18 blade apertures, plenty, so they have a very nice round out of focus area. The ultras and masters have nine or 10 uh, blades, but they're curved blades, so they also have very round out of focus uh, uh, objects. Uh, but we're also looking beyond that, beyond just the shape of those out of focus regions for the actual shift in, uh, in the image when things go out of focus. We have a whole other video on bokeh here, which is worth looking at if you haven't seen it before, which talks about that shift that happens in out of focus regions. What we found right away, uh, comparing the master to the ultra and the compact, was that the master had very, had very little shift versus the other two lenses. So here's the master, and as we go out of focus, you see that the image appears to basically stay static when it goes out of focus. Nothing seems to be changing shape. Here's the ultra prime. As we go out of focus, watch as her face and the model's face here shifts inside slightly, comes sort of out of the frame. And then here on the compact zoom, we see a similar thing. Again, shifting outward, the face appears to come slightly outward. So the compact zoom and the ultra in this case have a similar uh, bokeh. What we found overall is that these compact zooms fit right within the master and ultra prime world. The color and contrast is very similar to our master prime. The sharpness and bokeh and is very similar to an ultra prime. So they can fit right within there. It is a great complement to any production shooting with ultras and masters today. Very nice lenses. Looking forward to the 15 to 35 as well. Come check these lenses out at ABLE. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.